Well, welcome to the Dream Labs, everybody. Uh, Dr. Contrast live here, and uh, man, it's been quite some time since we've been back on the air, and it's so good to be back on uh, on the airwaves with you all. Uh, hope you had a great uh, Christmas season, and a uh, very, very uh, happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year to all of you. And uh, just let me come out of the blocks today with a very simple review on some things. I, I, I just interesting, over the course of the, the holiday, I just started looking at some of the portfolio work I was doing and, and involved in over the course of time. And I uh, thought it'd be interesting to go back and look at the histrionics of some of the some of the things I've really been privileged to work on. For example, Corvette specifically, uh, over the course of time. And uh, there's methods of the madness in today's stream. Um, what I'm really going to try and concentrate on is looking at the the, gen the generations from almost square one, um, from the Zero Arcus Duntoff generation all the way through the C8 series. And there's a lot of in betweens that we kind of go up and down on. I'll try to do the best I can to go through it, not to delay or overbear some of the conversation. Um, but there's been such an interesting transition in Corvette uh, from its very inception to where it is today in the C8 generation. Um, interesting to look at from the point of view of where it all started and what the generations went through and uh, some of the stories behind the scenes. And really the, the premise for this whole stream today is, is twofold. Number one, to kind of give you an overview of a little bit of a transportation design portfolio. And this is just for one brand. I mean, I've been involved in things with like Ferrari, Rolls-Royce, Maserati, Porsche, a variety of different manufacturers, but I think it really is. Hey, I'm Brad, how are you? Good to have you on board, Chief. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, by the way, before I begin any, go any further, I uh, really appreciate your text uh, or your uh, Discord note on that uh, last piece you did, that graphic piece uh, digitally. It really looked good, uh, Brad. So hang in there. We're all going to get there and uh, looking good. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so I, let's let's go back, and the, the real reason, uh, well, the, the, to me, the primary purpose for the stream today is again to go through the histrionics of some things. I look at media technique and approach, and maybe some philosophy about design. Uh, very little of that, but just to kind of give you an overview, um, and then really looking at, uh, for example, um, um, the possibility of, of over the holidays. I really went back through some of the things we've done over the course of time, and the one that struck me the most, and the one that stood out the most, was the popularity of the G12 series. So I think we'll go back in, uh, maybe tomorrow or at least Thursday, start to go back in and look at some of the things we've done over the G12. And then really look at, look at some of the surface work that I thought, you know, we were close. It has some great proportion and the character was there. But something was really missing in terms of, um, is, it really, um, is it really where we want it to be? And I think some of the last, uh, very quickly, the last two refinement sketches I did on the rear three, rear three quarter study to that, that piece. I'll bring it up maybe on tomorrow or Thursday, let you see what I'm referring to. There were some surface changes there that really made a huge impact in the overall form. I want to go back and revisit that and begin to regenerate that before we go to final uh, variation and hopefully have some prints done and some models made and so forth to get in the, uh, the internet for sale. Hey, Chip, uh, good to have you on board. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, um, let me begin here with a very interesting piece. Um, and this is uh, this is one of the this is one of the, the very first um, C7 C57 series that was done uh, during uh, the, obviously 1957. Zorak Stuntov, whom I worked with at the Chevrolet, at the Corvette division, outstanding individual, tremendously innovative engineer. Um, he came on board in the early 50s, uh, GM design staff, and um, it was interesting to find out that um, in his uh, autobiography, they hired him to strictly be a, a, a pilot manager for Chevrolet's engineering program for racing, uh, for uh, sport car development. But he always had a passion for racing and uh, specifically mid-engine machines. and. Uh, so behind the doors and behind the scenes, he began to develop this, this whole prototype called the Corvette C57 uh, Speedmaster. And it became a very uh, iconic piece of uh, GM history in terms of Corvette development. This is a, this is a finished piece that was done um, 11 by 17 with the pastel marker, a little bit of uh, his vignette in the upper corner. And uh, this piece, uh, for example, is now um, being on display at the Corvette Museum in uh, Kentucky, um, in the Bowling Green, Kentucky. My work, some of my work there is on their uh, website and their Corvette uh, and their retail store. So again, this is where it all started and um, very interesting um, development of things. He, he came in, wanted to look at certain sporting systems, wanted to develop a racing machine or, or a prototype to give, to give Corvette a real identity in the marketplace. And it's interesting to find out too, 
that while this was going on, there was a C1 series being prepared a little earlier on, uh, C1 series, or the first prototype done by Harley Earl, being prepared for the New York World's Fair. That promoted him, so to speak, to begin to generate what this uh, the C57 began to look like. So they were the first generation of it. Then it went into the C2 series. This is, again, another piece that's at the museum down in Bowling Green. Um, a very simple, um, iconic piece, a very legendary looking uh, little, uh, little finger scoop on the body side and the familiar Corvette uh, uh, tooth grill and so forth. Um, really interesting set of circumstances. So this was, this was the outgrowth of the C57 from Zora into, the, into the, the show car in New York, and then all of a sudden the C1 and 2 series, which began the whole histrionics of the machine. The next one we look at here, it's just a little bit of a variation of technique. This goes back into, this is Bill Mitchell's, um, what I refer to as, uh, we, we did a C3 series, this is a 3 series. He wanted to do a very interesting racing machine, and uh, very so we wanted to put together, uh, this is a, a Mako Shark variation, like a coupe series. Uh, very interesting. That silver bullet, yeah, that's what it really came down to, Shadow. It was interesting. Um, but this is a variation on theme, for example, of uh, Bill Mitchell's um, Mako Shark series. It was strictly done for race. It was a promotional piece through Corvette. And again, I want to show just a variation in technique and form and uh, throughout the whole generation of Corvette stuff here as we go through from sketch to sketch to sketch. So this was the Mako Shark of Bill Mitchell, very one of a kind um, production prototype that uh, strictly was used for promotional pieces for Corvette across the country and so forth. It was interesting to how it generated a lot of interest in the Corvette brand. Next, what we're gonna do here is the four series where all of a sudden we move again. This is kind of a beginning. This is another variation of the Mako series with a different front end graphic on it and um, some side pipe uh, work and so forth. A little bit lower uh, uh, belt line and fender series, but uh, again, um, this piece was done strictly for a show again. It was when it toured the country to kind of get into, for example, what the next generation of the C series C8s might look at. It's a very powerful uh, view, for example, but there was a little, little attention to detail, bringing in some of the, some of the future think for front end graphics and the, the power dome hood and so forth, and the lower belt line, as I stated, and, and specifically alloy wheels and the exhaust system. And let me start, slowly start to show the little Mako system and the paint scheme system coming up the body side, get more of that shark look uh, feel to it. So this is a four series, and then we went from that into um, into this, which is a very interesting problem. This is this this was the actual production, one of the final production sketches of the C4. Let me rearrange that a little bit. This is the actual production variation of the C4 that ended up after a series. Let's go back to this one for a moment. After a series, of a lot of variations on theme of looking at, at sketch renderings and so forth, and poten potential facelifts or character we wanted to establish for the brand. This is the one that ended up. This is a piece that's also done at the Corvette Museum. Uh, in Bowling Green, um, again, on, on their website. I think, I think it's um, art supplies or office art. Uh, there's four of my pieces of work that were accepted to uh, be put in the museum down there. So I'm very happy with that and proud. Uh, interesting uh, uh, set of things to kind of hang your hat on. So that's the four series. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then we went from that into the next generation here. This is, it goes from four. Uh, I'm going to skip a couple of generations here, but uh, we'll come back to it in a moment. This is one of the final concept sketches for the C6 uh, that became uh, part of the uh, um, a shift, so to speak, in packaging and proportions and so forth. Um, it was a very different uh, set of circumstances to work through, but we had a little bit of the Ferrari input with the, the G250 series up in the hood systems, uh, different lighting uh, group and so forth. But that iconic little um, and that little uh, razor on the body side to give it some distinction. Again, one of the final sketches. Uh, production sketches uh, in pencil uh, for the Corvette. This is a 11 by 17 size, but some of the original sketches were done almost to full scale. So uh, interesting, a lot of stuff. So we can see what the surfaces might look like and, and a variety of views. So went from that into this is a, this is, goes into a series of this again is a C5 piece. Um, this was done for a client in uh, Virginia. Um, this is a commission piece that uh, he, he sent some photographs along. And and uh, by the way, I do take commissions if anyone's interested at all. Um, this is a five uh, a Roadster uh, Spider series that um, they put together for him. He had a very beautiful looking machine, so we just kind of put this little process together from uh, for him. The final sketch um, again of the the, the C6 program series. Then we went for the same thing. Another client, this is another commission piece um, that was done for another thing. This individual I think was also in Virginia as well. 
But uh, he had a red uh, C5 with the uh, kind of Cabriolet top on it, and did put that together for him. This is all pastel marker work. <clears throat> again, C7 series was done for an individual in, uh, again, again in Virginia. Uh, all this stuff, by the way, came about uh, for the last few years. I've really been dedicated and put a lot of time into uh, doing a lot of uh, promotional work for uh, Corvettes of Carlisle. Um, I'm very involved in their their um, uh, their uh, hospitality services and also their their fun foundation, which is uh, uh, Amadeliosis Foundation. Um, Chip uh, Chip Miller, um, Lance's father, passed away from that. So every year I contribute. Um, sketch red rings for the to be to be donated uh, donated uh, for that cause, and uh, and this is one of the outcomes. And when I go there, they, I'll pick up some commission pieces for people who want me to do their work. Um, so this is again, this is done at Corvettes of Carlisle for a client. Um, the photographs again took in piece, and away we went. And from that, another one, same thing. Uh, Corvettes of Carlisle. That's a C C six uh, variation Roadster, um, and so forth. Um, again, this gentleman's from Missouri. Um, and that piece was done for him. He wanted it done specifically. So again, out of that Corvette uh, uh, Carlisle piece, we put that together for him. And let me get my hands so right out here. Another individual, this guy was from Missouri. Had a very specialized uh, C7 paint scheme on it. Wanted me to put that all together. And again, let me as I go through these uh, very rapidly, what I want to really illustrate is the variation of views, perspective, scheme, color, graphics, and so forth. It's all part of the mystery of putting good sketches together. And again, the preamble was to build a, a lexicon here, um, is just to really put it all together in terms of putting together a history of taking all this information, begin to refine some of the G12 stuff we're gonna work on the next few days here. You gotta bring up the juice a little bit and put a little more character into this, it becomes much more timeless and begins to establish an icon for the Forge brand and for the for the Dr. Contrast brand and things to come. So yeah, thanks very much, uh, Chip. Uh, that was a that was a very difficult, uh, this is not difficult, but a very unique custom paint scheme this gentleman had. It was fun to put together for him. Same thing here, this, uh, this gentleman um, had two machines. He had a four and a seven, and uh, he wanted them done in tandem, so we went ahead and put together a set of little sketch rendering series for him. Uh, this is a smaller variation. The original was, original was I think, 20 by 24 by 36. It was a large piece. Again, notice the difference in technique. Very flat surfaces here on the C4. Not flat, but not as dramatic. But look what happens when you go to the 7 series. All of a sudden, things change. You know, much more muscular surfaces. A lot more effective quality. A lot of difference in the drama, front-end graphics, and so forth. It's just the generation changed. And I think that's part of the whole mystery of putting this thing on today as far as the stream is concerned. And really look at how things change with surface and generations and then begin to put that into process here as we move forward with some of the uh, Dr. Contrast stuff and future references and future streams. So let me move along here without to bore you to death. This is another variation. Uh, this is a piece done for another individual up in Michigan. This is a C7Z series. Um, really powerful looking bright yellow and so forth. And he wanted really uh, kind of a bit of a dramatic view. So we put this guy together for him. Uh, much, much almost fills the page. <clears throat> Boy, pardon me. Losing my voice a little bit here. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun to put together some of these pieces. And again, look at the difference in the muscular surfaces, how light begins to really affect the shapes coming in from behind. Very minimal reflective quality, but look at the difference in the shadows and the valleys here. It goes into tone, reflected light, and back into that surface again. All this really is helpful in terms of putting together sketches. I've said this before, when we go through a series of streams and go through a series of exercises um, in, my, in my streams, how important it is to understand what surfaces are doing, how, what light does. Oh, it goes back to some of the learning series we did early on in the year. It's so vital because all of that material really helps to kind of alleviate the stress and the strain of putting together a good sketch. And if you understand what light does and what surfaces do, all of a sudden it simplifies the process and makes the vehicle or the thing you're working on much more believable. So there's a nice, powerful C7 series. Let me kind of, kind of shift the page here. Interesting program here. This goes back to the Zora Arcus Dune Top era. This is somewhat, uh, gee whiz, uh, some 30 years later. <clears throat> this is some of the early pilot sketches of the four rotor Corvette. Um, interesting story behind this, I'll keep it real brief. Very interesting story behind this guy was that um, Zora always had a dream that stayed, uh, stated to put Corvette in the marketplace with a midship system. He always had corporate resistance because it wasn't quite Corvette brand. It was quite where I wanted to take it. A lot of battles internally in the system at GM design staff and engineering to get this done. So he convinced Ed Cole at the time, let's go ahead and put together a program 
um, when I was at uh, Corvette at that time at Design Staff, all we got, for example, from Zora were four tires and a chassis. And his comment as was, we want to develop a four rotor system to go to the Paris Auto Show. And that Paris Auto Show is going to be in late September. Terrific. Wonderful. Little did I know that at the time when I was involved as the design staff guy here with guys like Jerry Palmer and Chuck Jordan and the rest of the formats and Hank Haga at design staff, little did I know that the show for, in Paris was in September. It had to be a running prototype. It had to be all full-blown. This is a four-rankle system, four-rotor series with a, with a rotary engine in it. And we had less than three months to build this car from the ground up. This, what you're seeing here is a vehicle that was built and designed, designed and built, fabricated at design staff in three months. Talk about an absolute journey. My goodness. Again, again, look at again, working with people, working with engineering systems, working with manufacturing guys. We went all over the globe looking for different things to work with. A lot of innovations came out of this. We had 11 patents on this for, uh, for automobile, automobile. Um, um, different systems or unique systems, innovative systems that came out of this thing, like digital instrumentation, cruise controls, hydraulic systems, braking system, all on it went. It was just a real, real journey. So this, this car was built from the ground up in three months to go to the Paris Auto Show. Three months, that's right, Pixel. Well, we had very little time, uh, and it had to run. When it got to Paris, it had to run on the stage to be a viable entrant into that Paris Auto Show. A real quick story, when it was all put together at design staff and engineering assembly, we all get down there, we cranked it up, we wanted to make sure before we shipped it to the airport and created it to go to Europe, to go to Paris, we wanted to make sure it started. Lo and behold, guess what? It wouldn't start. We never had it, it never started. So we shipped it anyway, and we sent the crew over there with it, and sure enough, about four hours before showtime, they figured the problem out, it was a carburetion problem, it solved the problem, it came out of the stage running, so we made it. So this is the four rotor Corvette. Again, the outgrowth, and let's go back to that first. All of this is a product of what this man started right here. We started the stream. That, that beginning in 1957 was the outgrowth of the same man, Zora Kostuntov. Years later, in the late 70s, came, a, came across the board and said, this is what we want to do, a, a midship four rotor engine. I worked with Zora on this program, on the, Z, on the uh, four rotor program. Incredible individual. Uh, very innovative, very, very demanding, but at the same time, really knew his stuff, and uh, he certainly brought it all full circle. I won't go into the tragedy of why this car never made it to marketplace, but uh, that's another story for another time. Phew, that was a, a brave bet. Yeah, it was a bet, no doubt, Pixel. So here we go. Now, this is another, this is another variation, um, another view of the same program. This is another overhead three-quarter of the four-rotor Corvette that we sent to Paris. Again, notice the difference in surface work. Very clean, smooth. Uh, not a lot of real res um, a lot of relationship to what we're doing here today in the eight series, but it set the tone. This car literally became the actual benchmark from which um, I swear, Doc, your drawing are always almost pictures. Well, thanks very much, uh, Brad. It's really interesting. It's um, uh, it takes a little bit of time to do this. Um, it's about maybe a two and a half uh, two and a half hour cycle to go from start to finish, from sketch to final process here. Um, but notice again the difference in surface. This was that kind of seventies when things were smoother, softer, but still a lot of surface definition. And the scale of this vehicle was very, very, very different. Very low to the ground. I'm about think about 44 inches in height, um, overall length with the midship in it and so forth. Really interesting proportions. It still can be viewed at the, um, the GM Museum up in the Warren today. But but what I'm trying to get across for this whole review here today is for all of us watching this thing. Um, oh, just interesting how. Just how generations change, how, how this was, in, the trend in the 70s was very smooth and simple surfaces. Then it went back to a lot of tortured work, for example, in the 80s. And all of a sudden came back in now with the 90s and 2000s, and again, it's back to much more brutal. So things change, and I think that's what's really interesting about moving with it as you go, because um, just interesting how, if you understand again what, what drawing does and what light and surfaces do, there's no end to what you're accomplished. Again, Brad, um, uh, you have, no, you're already there. Um, don't mis, 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 misunderstand the, the method here. Your skill set is solid. Once you begin to go in with more confidence and take more chances and make a lot of mistakes, I've made tons of mistakes. In fact, I've always kidded in some workshops, for example. I make so many mistakes, it's pathetic. They're so good, you can't recognize them. So that's one thing I really want to hold on to here. So you can be more than this. You've got a generation in front of you that's going to be absolutely tremendous. So you will be great. Dare to be great. That's what it's all about. 
being good is the enemy of being great. So don't settle for that. So thank you for the comment here, but don't don't give up. Interesting surface for it. Let's move along here. That was again an overhead three quarter. Then we went to the seven series, for example. This is a sport vehicle piece just done for conceptual rendering work. Different rims, different front end graphics and so forth in the core of that. A little bit of a different technique and tear, torn paper graphics and the like. Put it all together. So again, um, this is a very roadworthy, uh, one of a kind um, Edelman uh, C7 series that was done. So interesting. Um, there it is. So that's that guy. This is a very classic piece done for Lance Miller's group. Um, this is for a scholarship uh, funding program I did uh, for Lance uh, Corvettes of Carvile. Um, um, this is a very famous Corvette. It's called the Briggs Cunningham C3 series. That was the first American entrant to win Le Mans in 1954, I think, or 57, something. It was a very early it's a, uh, in the time period. But this, this piece of work was done very large. This is a copy of the, the actual finished piece. It was sent out to auction, and it went to, again, um, Lance Miller's father's, uh, Chip Miller's foundation for amadiliosis. So I'm always very, very on the, on, the, um, on the cutting edge of being able to do whatever wherever my skills are, as small as they might become. I'm always open to making contributions to great causes. And I do a lot of charity work. This was one of them that I thought that was very worthwhile. In fact, every year I go back to Carlisle, I'm invited back as a guest speaker, and I put on a presentation, for example, for the viewing audience out there at Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and at the same time uh, donate a lot of Corvette illustrated one of a kind of pieces for that foundation so that I can be a part of that process. I'm, I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of that, that situation, and it will not change. So this is the, uh, the Le Mans winning um, uh, Chip Miller Briggs Cunningham Corvette, a uh, very famous, um, it, it set the, again, set the bar for Corvette in Europe as being a viable product. Uh, next piece, a little watercolor of um, the, the good um, a good wrench material, for example, the racing C, uh, C5 series in, three, um, um, in Europe at the time. Uh, this is a Le Mans study for that. This is a watercolor, um, very scratchy kind of a watercolor, very loose and, and, uh, and uh, fluid and so forth. And again, again, technique-wise, changing technique means you don't change the mindset of, of the character or the graphics. You, what you change is the tempo of how the sketches come together and what, what it's good, how to use the graphics, how to use background, foreground. You know, put detail in the pieces and keep the emotion straight to give it some kind of character or personality. That to me is what drawing is all about. Good drawing is a matter of emotion. And the more emotional you are about what you see and how you begin to think about things, the more powerful the statement's going to become. So that's a little watercolor study. Another watercolor study at uh, Le Mans. Uh, again, the C5 series uh, coming up the hill. At the Rolex, for example, this was done again for charity purposes uh, for the Lance Miller Foundation. And again, this is kind of fun. A little change of tempo here. Um, these are some really fast. Let me do this. Let's kind of get these out of the way from over here. This, let's move this out. These are what I refer to as really quick exercises. These are watercolor studies, real fast sketch rendering studies. These are watercolor studies done, and I'm not exaggerating here. I time myself. This is a 10 to 15 minute sketch. I lay down the sketch. I lay down the wash, and I begin to draw back into it. Very quick, very emotional, but again, notice, uh, tr I keep trying to come back to this, and I hope I'm getting the point across, how powerful the emotion becomes. And, and making a statement, so that it makes a statement that's memorable. Oh, I remember that sketch, because it had a certain vibe there, a certain really impact about it. So that's a little watercolor study, number one. And then here's this companion piece. There's another variation where you can actually, some early Corvette stuff, where we actually, oops, let's get that lined up here. There's that, and that. Um, this is the first one we did, almost like a uh, Ferrari, um, uh, La Ferrari character to it. Uh, that was one approach. Then we went back into the histrionics of, of Corvette and looked at some of the old, uh, um, a lot of practice stuff. For, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, I'm still practicing too, Pixel. Believe me, every day it's just a practice session. So, but then I think I'm getting better at it. I, I, might, I might be improving on some things here. But again, going from the from the avant-garde uh, LaFerrari look for Corvette, and then turning it right around and going back in the 50s and picking up some of the iconic um, uh, little uh, little uh, eyebrow or the little uh, recess pieces, and a little blunter front end, and some of the some of the friendly round sections that we did that were done back in the 50s of like the C2 and three uh, three and yeah, C2 and C3 series. Um, that's what, and then getting a little bit more of an aircraft. Um, eight pillar structure to it. So a little bit of newness here and there, but again, uh, old, I mean, very new and progressive, back to the old archive of the, almost like a retro piece. Then the third one we did was this. Um, notice how the change again, going back to, well, is it more of the, more of the old drop off slope line into the into the intake piece? Is this a mid-engine character? Oh, well, if it is, we need to push the upper further, further, further forward. 
but again, it has that character about it that gives it some some credence about, uh, yeah, it could be an interesting little, let me move this over just a bit so you can see where we are here, there we are. So going again from the retro piece back to again the contemporary piece, looking at different, that same front end character, chiseling the front end off, dropping the, the belt line down, then kicking up a real high rear quarter, rear three quarter in this thing to give it a little bit more character to it. And again, using watercolor, I want to stress again, these are really fast 10 to 15 minute sketches. Um, I just laid down a wash, put in a sketch, and pay attention to very simple surface work. Notice there's not a lot of fuss here. You notice that every one of these cases, a lot of the paper is coming through. I'm keeping the washes real light so that I'm not getting kind of, I'm not I'm not looking at these sketches, for example, as finals. I'm looking for themes, looking for character. And to me, that's a very important process. When I go through a stream in Dr. Contrast, I'm always looking for that that jewel called character. What's the preservation? What's the message? What do you want to get across in your studies? What are you telling your client? Um, all these things are part of the process, and I think that builds credibility, too. It's not a matter of just putting down a sketch. It's understanding what the client wants and what he sees, and he can't see what you see, but you can be his vision, you can be his director, and you can be his general. That's the key. I've always said this. I think it's so true. The key in life, and especially creativity, especially this stuff in automobile and vehicle design, it's such a very important principle to work on. The idea, the concept is to let everybody else think it's their idea, even though it's yours. That's salesmanship. Now, that sounds like a lot of people say, well, that's compromising. Or you're, no, it's not. It's understanding that you see things more clearly than the client does, or in most cases. So therefore, your task is to convince the client that this is your idea. Isn't it great? Even though you generated it. Hard thing to get across sometimes, but that's the key to success. Understanding how to work with people, not being deceptive, not being um, disingenuous, but truly believing in the fact, well, you talked to me about what this program was going to be. You, you had a vision for what it is. Here's your vision. Now, you didn't see it, but I did. But guess what? It's your vision, not mine. Instant success. You'll be loved by everybody. And I don't mean that to be sarcastic. You will be respected by everybody because you know how to work with people and get, get your point across by letting it believe and letting them believe it was their idea. Awful, isn't it? But it sure works. <laughs> I'm not going to take that one back. So then to the last one here is a little study. Now a little bit of a cam back. So look, a little three, rear three-quarter study. Let me just move it out of the way. Let's get these guys down and out of the way. Here we are. Notice how, look at that. It's a cam back. Where in, if I do that in elevation, that's a, almost like a straight wagon, for example. It's almost like a shooting brake study off of Corvette. Um, could Corvette go to a shooting brake series? Absolutely. Um, in fact, the rumor has it that the new Z series, the Zora series, We'll be innovating in terms of not only engine systems and transmission and powertrains, but also maybe there's going to be one coming off the, the roof line that might become more of a shooting brake or a full cam back. So again, notice the technique. Simple, a lot of paper, a lot of background washing, and let the sketch come off of that page and just giving it character and personality. Let me stop here for a minute. Anybody, any questions at all or concerns? Am I making sense so far about what the mission is here today in this stream? The mission is to look at what is taking place it's not scummy, it's still compared to what they teach me at Disney College. It's not, uh, what do you, pardon me, Brad, what do you mean by it's not scummy? Uh, it's, it's compared to what they teach me at business, at business College. Could you clarify that please just for a moment? I'll take a second and just kind of wait for your response. Interesting. Hope I hope I didn't uh, take that out of context about what you meant there. Um, maybe you came back to the principle of letting them think that it's, it's your idea, uh, it's their idea, but you actually conveyed it. So let me move along here while you get that squared away here. So again, here's a cam back study from that uh, the series of watercolors, and those last four pieces I just showed you. For example, these guys, real slim little piece on watercolor paper. Um, the, each one of those guys are just 10 to 15 minute studies. I'll do that quite often, for example, during the course of a time, I'll go through a series of sketches or exercises where I kind of give myself a time. Why do I time it for this reason? What I think is important in the drawing cycle or the creativity cycle is to not overwork something. Give yourself enough, uh, ah, that's it. How many of you realize that when you go back into something and all of a sudden you start to go back in and fuss with it and begin to change it and adjust it, it loses its character. That's why I put myself on a timing schedule. What's done in 10 minutes is done. I look at it and say, ah, that's good, that's bad, this is it, this is positive, that's not, let's, let's build on this, let's not build on that. It, it becomes a learning exercise. 
just like you, I am always on the cusp. Each one of you listening here today, I know you're in the same frame of mind that I am in. Every time I go through a process, whether it's creativity, writing, thinking, reading, etc., I'm always looking for something to be learned. It's always new. Oh, you got a response. Hey, very good. Uh, the letting someone believe that it was their vision. Well, it's actually your composition. It's not scummy. A lot of compared to Maggie. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that's, no, thanks very much, um, Brad. I think that's, uh, that, that's interesting. I think that's, that's what's, what's taught out there is, is and I'm not going to get into a situation where you're debating here, um, the academic environment of this, but I think what's taught is the fact that, you know, just be quiet, do your own job and so forth, and you'll be okay. Um, and, I, and that sounds like a very small statement to make. I'm not being judgmental here, but I think, what I'm getting at is, in creativity, there's, there's a power in understanding that, listen, you, I've, I've listened to your conversation about what you want to accomplish. And if you notice, for example, during that conversation, people don't really see what you're after. But when you put down a sketch, oh, that's it. How many times have you gone through a situation where all of a sudden a client will say, oh, that's it? Yeah, that's your idea. Phenomenal. That proves to me where the power is. The power is not in your hands. It's conveying what's in their mind onto paper so that you can become their, their conduit. That's it. So, hey, very good, Brad. I'm glad you clarified that for me. So let's go move with these guys. Let's go back into this. This is, goes back now. Interesting generation change here. These are the beginnings of some of the early concept sketches for what's now on the road today, the C8 series. It's a black and white composition sketch. This is a copy of a very large drawing that was done uh, for the C8 series. Um, notice we're starting to move into some things, uh, some of the old icon body size, a little bit high hip in the rear quarter. Very different the aircraft, the lighting and so forth. Still bringing back the power dome. A little bit more of a fussy, um, know, almost like a McLaren or a, a, um, a variety of processing front end graphics to kind of keep it all in tune. So this started the whole process of getting to the eight series. Uh, not started it, but it was part of the whole generation of, of, uh, of body ship, knowing now that we're going to a midship engine. Midship all of a sudden became a whole different set of package dimensions and how to work with the, with the format. So from that into a little series of pencil sketches, these are some little thumbnail studies based on some of the C8 series we were looking at. Um, very quick, rapid little pencil sketches, no more than maybe 30 to 40 seconds or a minute a piece, uh, two minutes at most. Just putting ideas down, again, changing the view, elevation, into one point perspective, and then back to an elevation again to get some sort of a, a character change or personality. Then we move into this. This is some of the earlier, some of the stubby looking, very, very crunchy looking compact C8 series. It was uh, midship, low engine intake, so to speak, high belt line, very much of a slope uh, from front to rear, very dramatic, almost wedge look to it. So this again, pastel and markers, um, uh, this is, almost gives it a, a, a photo quality. Um, interesting little series. These are just a really, it, it's just fun to work with. Again, it, to me, the technique changes, no pencil to marker, to watercolor, changing it all the time, challenging yourself to make sure that what's been coming out of it is, is, is a product that you can kind of say, yeah, that's that's interesting. I like that approach, or I'm going to build on that approach. So it's all, again, part of the learning curve. C8 study, from that into a, all of a sudden now I'm moving into some of the more a little more elegant, uh, pretty close to body surface work on the C8 um, with the new, this uh, current generation midship. There was a lot of high hip in the rear quarter, a lot of low graphics, uh, full forward to canopy. The whole canopy shifted, cabin series, or, or mid cabin moved forward. So all of a sudden it gave on a different stance. Uh, again, same process. It's a little thumbnail sketch or a study sketch for that, that potential package process. Then we went from that into, uh, let me see, oops, I missed one here. Yeah, let's go back to Again, the rear three quarter, giving it more of almost like a Maserati appearance to it. You know, again, that reversing the intake scoop on the body side, chiseling back. And, and notice going away from the Corvette typical round lighting system. Um, very much of a controversy, but it uh, began to work very nicely for that process. So, again, another study about changing the graphics. Notice in this case, the intake is moving rearward and coming forward. In this case, it's all coming forward all the way through. So, a little bit of change of pace. Longer, longer front quarter into the rear quarter, and then really chopping up the rear tail section on this thing. So that's another little study here. The little again, almost the same process here, taking the same view, but just doing a little bit more. Let's do this. If I can get this thing to work here. There's that guy, and then a little bit of that guy. Just no, it's almost the same character in the rear end, but again, changing a little bit of the character of the, of the intake piece. Little subtle changes like that make an enormous difference in the presentation or the character. Of, of what what a drawing or a sketch can do, and again, what I want you to notice in this drawing, um, it's not the greatest in the world, but I want you to notice that. Look at the white, the, the line weight changes. For example, going from thin 
the thick, closest to me, building it up as it disappears, going from thick back to thin. Same process here, same process, dark to light. Very simple tone, a lot of paper coming through here, and being very, very specific and very detailed where we need to be, where, where, where we need to put the emphasis, we place the emphasis. Where we need to open it up a little bit, we let it go. Let the eye foreclose it all. That's all part of the magic of going through the creative process here. Again, a little pencil study. Then we go into this. Pardon me here. Get this guy thumbed up. Oops. And my hand straightened out. We're in good shape. There we are. Again, it's another variation on a different front end. Uh, notice we're starting to close in on the rear three-quarter study on this guy. Uh, yeah, the power line weight is absolutely correct. You've got it, uh, Brad. It's overwhelming. Uh, I'm, I'm a huge believer in line weight studies and how it all begins to affect the sketch. Nothing's the same. Everything closest to us, you hit it. And everything you move in, just let it move away and let it create depth. Another variation on the different, now we're noticing the front end graphic is starting to change a little bit. Um, a lot more, I guess my art teacher was wrong. <laughs> no, he wasn't wrong. Um, you just went into a different thing. He always told me shading is everything. Um, it, yeah, it is in some respect, but um, shading is not a not a, a product of uh, shading is a great product of great line work. If you have great line work, you'll you'll, you'll discern where to place the shading, where to leave it alone, let the paper come through. So it's a, there's a constant trade off here. But again, uh, CH study, adding the wing, changing and getting the format, the rear three quarter intake uh, being established, and again, little front end graphics changes. Uh, not quite where the production one ended up, but we'll get there eventually. Again, another variation. Here, it's getting a little closer. This is this is just a real quick little pencil sketch. Uh, again, it's getting a little more refined, and I notice how again, very little simple use of pencil here. A lot of paper coming through, and again, a lot of line weight changes. For example, in through here, line weight change in through here, line weight change in through here, change in through here, setting the tempo or the rhythm of a sketch. Uh, again, much much closer front end graphics than the eight series, and the hip and the intake and the cap board. Uh, cabin being pulled pull forward. Here's some interesting things, just on variation on things. Just a tone paper study. Uh, once it's down, this is a little, little quick little pencil sketch on indigo blue paper, just to see what it might look like in terms of maybe doing a couple of color changes in the area uh, where it needs to be. Uh, notice now we're starting to close in on what the theme, what the feel of the character is, the intake, the front end graphics are getting a lot closer. Lighting systems becoming much more uh, tuned in. Uh, this is this is a great medium. I mean, I, I hate to say this. I've said it all the time. Every time I use it, this is a great lost medium. Something about tone paper that's just exciting because you can use the paper as the middle ground and you're working highlight and shadow. Again, part of the process of the, the great creative uh, getting the job done. A uh, little, little tone paper study of a C8. And what would happen if you did a variation on theme? What if a C8 had a uh, like an SUV series or, again, a can back? Uh, another variation on theme or just a really quick little sketch based on what that might look like, uh, front end study. Uh, though again, notice the change in the front end graphics, change in the lighting graphics. And we're always moving things around to see what might be the most uh, formidable statement to make for this brand. And then and some little Ferrari stuff, and I'm just cheating and borrowing some things from time to time on that guy. So there's a little SUV study, and then really doing a shooting brake study. There it is. Uh, what would it look like if you added a shooting brake to the current C8? Um, really interesting things in terms of now. Notice the front end graphics are pretty well tuned in. It's getting very much solidified. And all of a sudden, this whole shooting rate where you calibrate the the, uh, the upper and then really drop the, the hip in. And then a little bit of the glass of the body side or the uh, the graphics and the cabin being a little more accentuated. And again, notice where the line weights are starting to occur. Look, look at that. Line weight, the line weight changes. And again, a lot of paper coming through and just hitting the whole upper surfaces with pastel. As I've said in, in previous streams, pastel is interesting too. Once that's going down, once that pastel goes down on tone paper, all of this stuff can be erased back out. So you get back to that middle ground. So that's the last little tone paper study. There's a line study, um, just a pencil sketch of a C8 series, a uh, little red pen study, just putting a view together. Uh, yeah, I, I did too. Uh, dark paper is terrific, Pixel. I mean, I, I agree with you. It's just, there's something about it that's magical because it, it's effortless. And again, it relies on understanding where to place the emphasis and where to leave things alone. It's a judgment process. It's not easy, but the more you leave it go and the more you let the paper work for you, the more powerful they become. It's all a matter of just mysteriously, and it's, it's very emotional. Again, in a little line study, just a ball. Sometimes I'll sit back and just take a ballpoint pen out and just start doing some perspective sketches on what's the beauty, what, what beauty do I want? How do I correct the tires? What do I want to do up front? Uh, what's it going to look like? What's a shadow drop going to do? And once that's established, the last thing you do is this. You just kind of come out of that thing, and then we'll wrap it up with this guy here. There's a little final color study of the C8. When it all came together, 
This is what it's starting to look like. There is a final variation. Um, just interesting on what the CA might look like. Very wide track front end, a lot of muscle in the hood surfaces. Again, surface changes and the same intake piece. A lot of low profile, but a little bit of the Corvette graphics um, in, the, in the upper corner of the sketch. And then let's see, I got kind of, these like a good practice exercise to try and render tones. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, and if you're referring back to uh, the, the tone paper, um, right, uh, Shadow? It, yep, correct. Um, do you know? Do you know to learn how cars work to understand how they're always in shape? Let's see, I've got a really good question. Pardon me here. Um, do you know how to learn to draw and work to understand how they pose and shape, just like learning anatomy to draw humans? Do you need? Yeah, I think that's a great amount. It, it is an, it, it very much is an anatomical process, Brad. That's a really good description. Because all these surfaces we're dealing with is very anatomical. There are shapes and surfaces that are going to be very soft, some very sharp, very definitive. So I think you do have to understand what the anatomy is, and the right pose and the right view will tell you that story. So I think that's a very good observation on your behalf, because I've always looked at drawing automobiles or product design or architecture is almost an anatomical study. What's it made out of? What are the, what are the conditions? Let's go back to that learning. Uh, one of the very early learning things we did, some of the lesson plans, was volumetrics. Volumetrics will tell you that. What's it made out of? It's basically a rectangle, and then in, in the cylindrical shapes, and the round forms, and back into... All these things begin to influence how you see the forms come together. So that's a very good observation. It is how do, how, how do cards work from the point of view of being anatomical? They have certain descriptive shapes that, that really will define how you illustrate and refine, define them. And it all comes back down to understanding what those five basic solids do. So that kind of culminates where we are here today again. I hope this has not been uh, too much of a, uh, a talk fest here for you. I just want to go back again. The purpose of the stream to start out the new year was this. Basically for me. Why me? I'm not being selfish here. I wanted to go back and look at this stuff to say, okay, what do I learn from this so-called portfolio of Corvette work? And I can begin to now put into certain things like the G12 series and things to come. Really interesting. Uh, uh, just interesting how what, what's going to come from his relatives. Because I'm looking at all this history on to say, okay, now there's some things we did in the G12. From this generation, this study series, I'm going to go back and reduce that thing. And then also, I'm going to start doing some lesson things and some plans. What do I want to really stress? And I really, when I stop here for a moment, I'm going to ask you something very, very familiar. And I hope it's not an offense to you. This is where you come into play here. What would you like me to do this year in terms of, um, for example, some lesson things and some, some maybe some processing work to do? Do we go back into some basic geometry? Do we understand? I'm going to go back into line weight, proportion how to put together a surface and so forth. What are we looking at? I really would love to have your input on this because you're part of the audience that I respect, fully respect, and you need to know, you need to know that I can help in some cases and maybe in some cases I won't be able to, but I'll do my very best to do so. Um, <laughs> Brad, I would enjoy any talk. But, oh, thanks, uh, very much appreciate that, Brad. I don't want to become um, so laborious here verbally that it, that it takes away the effect of what we're after. The effect is good, solid visual thinking. And that comes down to understanding what the process is. And I really do respect, that's a great input about geometry. And uh, the anatomy of the human form, very much the product, it, it all relates. You can't separate one from the other. I think I said this before in some of the earlier streams. I had a great professor, Homer Gassi, in Sid Mead in school. They always harp upon the fact that a great industrial designer is a great fine artist. He understands figure. He understands how to work with anatomy. He understands how those things begin to begin to portray themselves in the marketplace and how to begin to put it all together. And every time I go to an illustration that this stuff, you don't see that very much in, in car design now. That's a fine art process. That's a fine art approach. It gives it the character about it. That's really interesting. So once again, I really do appreciate the fact that uh, that this really appreciate the fact that it's all been very much a part of understanding what's happening next. Where do we go with this? And again, stay tuned because I'm going to start moving into some things in this year's streams that are a lot more uh, pervasive. I also want to start a whole new lesson series called the Intermediate, where I get into the many things like proportion for vehicle design and, and then more specific things. So all that's yet to come. Um, I would say I would love to see you move revision to basics with this time and digital art. Yeah, I've, I've done that. Uh, I, I think I've uh, mentioned, uh, I've, I've not mentioned that. I've, I've just purchased a, a, uh, um, an iPad series, pencil and so forth. I'm doing a little practice work. I'm going to start opening up some things here. Um, but uh, yeah, just the basic things, and just yeah, that's a good point. Uh, uh, very well done there, Brad. I think that's part of the whole process too. Uh, once I get back, um, I'll go through some things. I've already done some practice work on my pad and so forth. It's been fun. I've, I've learned an awful lot from it. 
uh, from a professional point of view, I don't do an awful lot of it because most of my clients really want the handcrafted art. But I think I'm going to start making the transition here. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, I've got Procreate as well. So all those programs I've got, I'm starting to learn some things about it, and we'll start plugging it as we go. So thanks for the input, uh, Brett. That's very helpful. Anybody else, please feel free to just um, tune in, things that I need to do, and um, what, I, what you'd like to see me do, and uh, at least take an effort at, and uh, begin to relate it back to what we're doing here day to day. So all that to say, folks, thank you so much for being patient with me here today. Uh, I want to go back and just review some things in the, in the Corvette portfolio. As I said, I've got a whole portfolio of a lot of different things, uh, not just automobile, but a transportation product and so forth, but I thought this would be a good launching point to kind of teach myself about where I want to take some of the things we're going to do this year. So, please feel free to give me a visit at uh, drcontrast.com, my website. We're still adding some things to the uh, the materials and so forth to the store. Um, if you have any drawing information, uh, please pick up, uh, take a look at what I've got as far as the uh, the beginner series. And if you know of any individuals that uh, want to learn how to draw some things, please, I would appreciate you passing along and promoting the the, the website. Um, also, uh, keep 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 feeding input. And I can reach at uh, Jim at drcontrast.com. If you have any information about what you'd like to see me do, more than happy to do so um, and respond in kind. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And again, can't thank you enough for taking the time to be with me today. It's good to be back on board. It's like to be back on stream here. A little bit of practice here, but we'll get back to it. We'll, uh, we'll see as we go here. So once again, I want to thank you very much for joining me. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. And always remember to never forget the day you're great because you are. All the best, gang. Take care. Thank you.